Oh, hey there. <laughs> wow, I didn't realize, I didn't think I was gonna be able to. <laughs> That's so cool. Um, I, know, I know it's a common sight, but I really didn't think I was gonna be able to see it today. What's that? Oh, well, I'm talking about the D&D player who can't stay committed to their character. That's you, isn't it? You wouldn't have clicked this video otherwise. Don't worry, I'm here to help. Obviously, as D&D players, we all know the memes of us creating character after character after character, especially as forever DMs. However, we've also been with players who have just wanted to swap out characters over and over and over again. They constantly get their characters killed, or they have their characters leave the campaign and ask the DM to introduce a new one over and over. And while yes, that does let you play all the characters, what it does is it leads to a lack of commitment to your current character and a lack of investment. And that can become really frustrating because you want to play new characters and you're bored of your current one, but you don't want to keep swapping and not getting invested. And so so it becomes really difficult to try and find a solution to this that feels satisfying. But there are ways of staying invested in your current character and preventing yourself from constantly swapping over and over again. Trust me, I get the need to swap, and I've done so in a campaign of mine before, but it helped me learn some very crucial things on how to prevent this and how to actually go in a way that you feel comfortable with your character and don't grow bored of them when they begin to get stagnant. Let me show you some examples. Trust me, I'm being a little bit of a hypocrite here. I understand the need and desire to play new characters. In fact, this is my first PC ever. This is D'Artagnan. I've talked about him a lot on the channel, always will because he's my longest running PC. And the thing about D'Artagnan was I really enjoyed playing him, but constantly wanted to play something else. In fact, the subclass that I played him with changed, I think, four times over the course of the campaign. And I was thankful enough to have a DM who's willing to work with that ridiculousness and make it work within the story, but still, nonetheless, that's a little insane, and I wouldn't recommend anybody doing that. But the reason I kept doing that is because I kept thinking that I could improve the way he was, or the way he played, or his flavor, by changing that stuff over and over again. And that's just not necessarily how it works. Yes, it will be fun in the short term. Having those new abilities to just run through, awesome, feels so good, for about a session or two. And then it just eventually becomes less fun, more boring, and eventually leads to you wishing that you had some of those more stable abilities that the people in your party who've been playing more regular characters have. And so here's what I did eventually to just settle in on wanting to play D'Artagnan. Number one, I started trying to find more unique ways of using his abilities, and I promise you, this is the first thing you should do. He was an artificer, and while at first he was an artillerist and then a battlesmith, well, it changed a lot, the point is, eventually I began to realize that I just needed to flavor what it was that he was doing in a more interesting way. I would cast spells and they would feel kind of boring, but then one day I decided I was going to cast Thunder Wave, and instead of just casting Thunder Wave, I told the DM that I was going to pull a grenade out of my pocket, slam it into the ground, and press a button on top of it. And everyone at the table looked at me with genuine confusion thinking I was actually pulling out a grenade. Not the case. I was casting a spell. But that made it so much more interesting to me because I began to think, hey, what can I do to make this more interesting? What can I do to make this feel more impactful and exciting? And the Artificer specifically really leans into that flavor, but not all the rest of the classes do, but it doesn't mean that they can't. As a wizard focusing on how you cast your spells, or as a fighter learning and figuring out how your character fights and beginning to evolve that creates a much more interesting dichotomy. Honestly, on the level of the fighter, I could not recommend more having your fighter watch who they fight. Have them learn from who they fight and begin to describe that. If they get their ass handed to them in a fight versus a giant, the next battle, have them start to use some of the abilities that the giant used. They noticed that the giant was huge and massive and had this heavy club that they swung down. Well, they can't do that, but if they can get to a higher vantage point, jump off the wall and swing down, they can use the momentum the same way the giant did. Have them learn in that way. But really, that is the best tip I can give you up at the forefront. Make sure to flavor your battles or your character in the way that makes it more impactful and exciting for you. Find a way of making them feel less samey by having them evolve as the campaign goes on. But mechanics is not the only thing that you need to focus on. One of the most important aspects is your character's arc or how your character changes over the story. Because one of the most easy ways to get bored of a character is if you feel that the character is predictable and always going to be giving the same reactions to everything. I understand how easy it is to get bored of your character, but the best thing that you could do is focus on what they need to grow on and how they change. How many times does it become irritating to watch a character who just never evolves, never learns from what they did, and never makes a different decision because of past mistakes? That's what it's like to create a character and get bored of them without fully focusing on what you could do to improve that. The thing with characters in D&D is you have to focus on what it is that's going to make them change and become more interesting. It's so incredibly easy to begin to watch a character, get bored of what it is that they're doing mechanically, but not focus on what they're doing in the story. 
the things that they do mechanically can be affected by how they've chosen to grow in the story. Once again, taking D'Artagnan as an example, at one point in the story, he ended up intentionally shooting one of the party members with his gun, and that caused a lot of issues for him. For the rest of the entire story, he was a little traumatized by having done this, and because of this, throughout the story, his hand would shake whenever he tried to shoot the gun. And mechanically, I asked the DM to give me disadvantage whenever he used it. Ultimately, he ended up abandoning his core mechanic, the gun, the thing that I had built the character around, because he just was unable to convince himself to use it after having used it to harm a friend. And that was where I began to grow and change him as a character. Yes, he was still technically the same character of the same subclass, but I had to figure out how to use a new weapon, how to make him evolve from that, and yes, it mechanically gimmed my character, which I understand some people don't want to do. But this is just an example of things that you can do. The ways that your character changes changes the mechanics. Say you're playing a healer who is typically very selfish, but insists on healing simply because it is the best thing to do. Eventually, they may grow less selfish and more involved in the party and start changing the way that they play. Maybe they don't heal anymore, but instead do everything they do to prevent the need for healing in the future, casting spells like Aid or Longstrider, trying so hard to help the party because now they hate seeing their party members get hurt. If you can do that and focus on how the character evolves, it begins to become so much easier to get invested in them because the mechanics follow that. Some games focus on combat and mechanics, and there's nothing wrong with that. There absolutely is not. And if you begin to get bored of the mechanics and combat, well, if that's the kind of game you're running, then I would recommend trying to find a new way to play. But there are also other ways of doing that. Say you're playing the character and you begin to want to feel more of a sorcerer vibe. Well, there's actually a lot of feats out there that you could take in place of changing the character to give them just a little bit more of a tweak. And honestly, I find a little bit of a tweak rather than a full rework of your character is oftentimes more effective in making you feel satisfied while playing them. Taking the Eldritch Adept feat or one of the Magic Initiate feats, or if you are a Magic Caster, taking one of the Sneaking feats or one of the Martial feats can do a lot to change and grow the character. Now, does it always work and is it always mechanically optimal? No, but it doesn't necessarily have to be because you're just trying to find a way to be interested in playing the character. And if your interest in playing the character is optimizing them, then talk with the DM and figure something else about that. The other thing I recommend doing is starting to look into magic items rather than just changing your character. Try to find something that will implement a new way of playing for the character. Talk to the DM about wanting to find a different magic item, or searching for one, or even seeing if you can craft one, though that is a much larger task that the DM has to then figure out. The point is, all those things can supplement making your character less boring to play and more interesting in the long term. Playing in a D&D campaign causes a long commitment to a character, and if it gets boring, you want to change that. But if you change it, you no longer can get invested, and it becomes much more difficult to do. The last thing I would recommend you focusing on, however, is if your character is finished with their character arc, let them be finished. How many times have we watched a show like something on the CW, where characters just keep making the same mistake over and over, or trauma keeps happening to them, and they are always trying to change, and never just complete becoming a whole person? Now, don't get me wrong, we as people do not just become whole people, but in the case of a story, it's generally recommended that you find an end place for your character. And if your characters reach that end place, let them reach it. Go ahead and do that. For D'Artagnan, I did end up retiring him about maybe two quarters of the way through the story. And why did I do that? Because it felt like he had just completed what he was doing. He had gone this whole time trying to convince himself that he was not a weapon, and he finally figured out he didn't have to be. And at that point, I had two choices. I could try and find a new conflict for him and get a little bit bored, play him as a whole character, which was an option, or retire him and start something new. And so he ultimately did retire. And if your character is reaching that point, if they are no longer needing to grow or change and you're growing bored of them, it's okay to retire them. Nobody has to adventure forever. And so I ultimately did have him say his goodbyes. He was still a part of the campaign though as an NPC. And I introduced a new character who had different flaws that I could then continue forward with. It's okay to change characters. And I don't want this video to say otherwise, but I do think it is important to really take a look at it and figure out when it is time to do so. Or if you are going to ultimately hurt yourself in the long run by removing some of your investment in the game because you haven't been able to stick with your character. It's so easy to want to change them, and it's so easy to want to experience new characters, but I think it removes some of the joy of D&D if you can't show at least a little bit of personal restraint. Not a lot, but some, because that begins to help you enjoy the game in the way that it's kind of been intended to these days. I won't say it originally was. Changing out characters was a very frequent thing in older editions of D&D, mostly because characters died a lot. That was kind of the point of the game. But it's evolved since then, and this is a fun way of playing that I personally endorse. Not everybody has to do it, but I like it quite a bit. 
So work with your party, try it out, and go out into the world and make it your own. Don't forget to have a great day, and of course, never forget to play your own. This video wouldn't be possible without the incredible, beautiful bastards over on our Patreon. I'd like to give an additional very personal thank you to the Divine Bastards Big D the Cool Guy, BKBW, Clark Smith, Diet Blue, Duplicolor, Manifestering, Rocky, Sassy Cat Productions, Sorit, Supreme Court, Talia Martin, Tin Eye, Void Mystic, Volpe Nico, and Zombies for People too. We wouldn't be able to do what we do without you guys, and you mean the absolute world to us. Keep being beautiful, keep being amazing, and as always, make the world your own.